How you doing guys? I just want to show you a quick technique on how I process my landscape images in Photoshop. At the moment I'm running Photoshop CS4 and here's an image I took in Greystones in the lovely part of um, Ireland which is just south of the main capital city of Dublin and the shot here is it's not particularly interesting but I think it's mainly due to the lighting, it's quite flat. But anyway, I'm going to show you how I can improve the contrast, make the colours a bit more saturated, and make it a lot more appealing and more interesting. So, I've taken the image directly from Lightroom. So, we're just going to um, zoom in on this image here. So, first thing we do is make it full screen, so Command-0. Maybe a bit too much. Okay, that's fine. Now, the very first thing you should do when you get an image like this is look at the histogram. Because the histogram will tell you where the main points are. Um, over on the left hand side, we have the black information. Now, the bulk of the information is in the midtones. Very, very little shadow detail and very, very much highlight detail. Well, maybe there is a bit of highlight detail, but definitely the shadow detail is very lacking. So, as you can see, it does need a bit of improvement in contrast to make it more appealing. So the first thing I would do with this image is I would grab the background layer and drag it onto the new layer icon, which duplicates it. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to apply what's known as a contrast mask. Now, a contrast mask is taking an image, inverting it, desaturating it, and blending it in so that it makes your light part darker and your dark parts lighter. I'll show you why we're going to do this in a minute. So to do this, we go to Image, Adjustments, Desaturate. We haven't touched the original image because that's under it here. We've just created a duplicate. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to apply an inverse to make a negative. So we go to Image, Adjustments, and if you see here it says Invert. No, it's posterized. Sorry, wrong one. Image, Adjustments, Invert. So what you can see here is all the light parts in the sky and in the clouds, this has all become darker, but the rocks have become a lot lighter, but the shadow areas in the rocks are still dark. So effectively, it inverts everything to be the complete opposite. Now, why do we want to do this? Because we're going to apply what's known as an overlay blending mode, which means that everything that's 50% gray remains the same. Everything that's lighter lightens the image, and everything that's darker darkens the image. Observe. So we go to up here. Where it says normal, we change the blending mode to overlay. And instantly you could see that it has improved the overall detail. But it looks very fake, it looks plasticky, it looks soft. It doesn't look crisp at all. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to take this new contrast mask and we're going to have to blur it. How much we need to blur it by? I would say we need to go to about 250 pixels. So to do this, we go to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur. It's set at 250 pixels. Usually, this is what you want to do. Again, it all comes down to experimentation. So, and the computer's running very, very um, intensive. So it may take a while just to get a preview of the full Gaussian Blur. And instantly you could see that it's actually brought a lot of the detail back. I would say around 240 to 250 pixels. Definitely improves it. If you don't put enough of a high enough radius, you get what's known as ghosting. And you get these light halos around the image, which look very, very unnatural and very fake. 
So after we do this, we click OK, and it's going to apply the Gaussian blur to the contrast mask. So you may ask me, why did I do that? Well, it's actually increased the detail in the shadows and it's brought back some of the highlight detail. It's equivalent to applying the known as a um, shadow highlight adjustment, but it's a lot stronger. So after that's completed, let's have a look at it before and after. Here's after, here's before. As you can see, the sky has gotten darker, the clouds are a lot more detail, and there's better detail in the rocks. Overall, you have improved the image. The next thing we're going to look at is we're going to look at the levels. So to do that, we're going to go to New Adjustment Layer, Levels. And this image seems to be perfect. You do have detail in the shadows and you do have detail in the highlights. Maybe we could extend that a bit more. So if you want to say, for instance, you want to create, so we're shifting the pixels from this to a darker range. You increase the black slider. How much by? You want to make sure that it's okay to have some clipping because Natural images do have shadow detail, but you don't want to drive it too far over where you lose detail. So I would say roughly there, and it's the exact same with the highlights. Let's see it before and after. It hasn't made a huge difference to the contrast, but it's good to do. The next thing I'm going to do is apply a Curves Adjustment. What a Curves Adjustment will do is further increase the contrast, particularly in the midtones. When you saw the first histogram, you could see that a lot of detail was in the middle range, or the midtones, and it's not spread out enough. So, to do that, what you want to do is you want to find roughly drop drop a point here about maybe not, not quite a third of the way up roughly there and just drop that down a slight bit what that's going to do is that's going to darken the shadowy part of the midtone and you do the same here increasing the highlights what you have done here is you have created a S curve. Now it's a very, very slight S curve. This is a very subtle adjustment. But what that's going to give you is a lot more contrast, which looks very, very promising on the eyes. Here's a before, and here's an after. So it's really brought out a lot of the saturation in the sea. It's brought out a lot of the detail here. The other way I would improve this then is apply a hue saturation adjustment. As some of the colors in this look a bit faded, washed out. They're not rich, they're not sharp. They're very, very fade colors and it doesn't look good. So to do that, I go to hue saturation. Without applying as a main adjustment, I wanna look at what we want to brighten up. And definitely we could see but the colors here around by the grassy banks are very very faded and tired looking so I'm going to select the greens and we take our eyedropper we point it towards what we want here which is roughly here so what it's done is it's taken a selection of between yellow and green and we're just going to boost the saturation of that up a slight bit Perhaps we may change the hue to darken it. The next thing we want to do is change the blues of the sea. I'm going to make this a lot more saturated because the sea 
we like to see a nice uh -huh, blue sea. Again, further increasing the saturation on that improves the image and it's much more appealing to us. Perhaps we might darken a bit. If you could see in the hue adjustment panel, it's taking the image and it's look for these colors here, which are cyans and blues, which is what the EC is made up of. So there we have our adjustment. It's a very simple, but it's a good way of processing a landscape image in Photoshop. What I would do then is maybe apply some sharpening to increase the detail. Maybe do some slight dodging and burning, bring out the highlights a bit better. But overall, I do think this is a good adjustment. So it may be useful to you if you're doing some photo processing and you want to know how to do it. This is a good technique. It's a good workflow. It works for me. The image looks strong and it makes a perfect image and it works for landscapes, portraits and any other such image. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to comment, rate and subscribe. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.